Welcome back to Dan Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie, The Visitors 2, The Corridors of Time, released in the year 1998. Following the events of the first film, Godfroy has returned from the 20th century and is about to get married to his love, Frenigod. Suddenly, her father, the Duke, interrupts the ceremony, accusing Godfroy's servant of stealing his jewels, which includes a holy relic that must be with Frenigod at the time of her wedding or she will never bear children. Then and there, Godfroy pledges to the family that he will find the jewels no matter what it takes. We then see the wizard, Eusebus, corner Godfroy to ask if he and his peasant had returned from the future safely because he believes they somehow left the corridors of time open. Meanwhile, Jacquard, the modern-day descendant of Godfroy's servant who had been swamped before they travel back in time, finds himself stranded in this strange land being followed by wolves. While running away, he is captured by some locals who take him to the Inquisitor after finding a toy in his jacket. Back at the castle, Godfroy is informed the Duke is horribly ill, which he thinks is due to the lost holy relic. After being informed of his servant's fate, Godfroy rushes to try and save him from being burnt alive by the Inquisitor. He arrives just in time to spare him the pyre. However, is then told the investigation must continue because they now believe he was the one who had stolen the Duke's jewels. Back in the future, the real servant and his new friend Jeanette are creating a mess at a grocery store in an attempt to steal, but the manager discovers them and throws them out. While fleeing the scene, Jeanette suggests they go back to Beatrice, Frenigon's descendant, and work for her in exchange for protection. They arrive at her house, but her husband, Jean-Pierre, will not let them in. However, when Beatrice returns home, she insists they be allowed to enter their home. Once inside, Beatrice learns they have sent the wrong man back in time, and her friend Jacquard is now stranded deep in the past. Feeling they must correct the situation, Beatrice asks if there is any more potion left, but he says no. Then, while Beatrice is busy talking to Jeanette, believing she is also from the past, the servant hides the jewels in a wooden box in the fridge. Despite their uninvited guests making a mess around the house, Beatrice insists they stay there until she can find a solution. So she sends them into the living room, where the servant becomes frightened by the television and destroys it, calling it the devil's tool. The incident causes a fire, which is only worsened when the servant tries to extinguish it with vodka instead of water. Meanwhile, Beatrice visits Ferdinand, the descendant of the wizard who previously made the potion to allow Godfroy to travel back to his time. After telling him about the situation, she asks him to give her the potion to send the servant back home and bring Jacquard back to the future. Ferdinand agrees to help her, saying everyone must go back to where they belong. After telling Beatrice that Marriott will deliver the potion to her house, he advises her not to mention it to anyone as they will not believe her. Elsewhere, the police find Sergeant Gibbon locked away in the dungeon of the castle. After learning Godfroy was the one responsible for the incident, the officer intends to file charges against him. While at Beatrice's house, the servant tries to help the firefighters but only makes it worse with his usual antics and is sent away. At Jean-Pierre's clinic, he gets a call from Cora, the wife of Hubert, and asks the servant to talk with her. Thinking he is her long-lost husband's friend, she tries to find out information about him, but the servant cannot understand her. Thinking she is actually asking about Godfroy, he reveals he is busy preparing for his wedding, which makes her furious with Hubert, and she threatens to take legal action against him. As they now believe Hubert is at Beatrice's house, Cora reveals to her daughter Philippine that her father is alive. When Beatrice returns home, the firefighters request her help in keeping the servant from interfering with their job. She tries her best to stop him, but he keeps destroying everything at the house as Jeanette finds the jewels in the fridge and puts them in her bag. In the past, Godfroy seeks a wizard's help who reveals they must bring the stolen jewels back from the future or he won't be able to marry Frenigod. At Beatrice's house, Marriott arrives to deliver the magic potion. She then mixes it with cocoa and gives it to the servant, but Jeanette refuses to drink it. 
While Beatrice tries to convince her, Jean-Pierre accidentally drinks the cocoa and is sent back in time along with the servant as Jeanette flees the house with the jewels. Beatrice chases after her, saying she is blocking the corridors of time by refusing to drink. Jean-Pierre and the servant then wake up in the year 1123, where they learn the land is being invaded by the Count of Burgundy. With soldiers roaming around everywhere destroying villages, the pair run for their lives while Jean-Pierre is still in shock by his surroundings. They are soon rescued by Godfroy, who takes them to the Inquisitor, who is torturing Jacquard by force-feeding him water. Godfroy then urges his servant to find the jewel thief because they need to get them back to save the Duke's life. On returning to the castle, Frenigod tells them the Duke's condition has gotten serious. Godfroy's soldiers also tell him that Jacquard has blamed him for setting his Range Rover on fire, but the Inquisitor thinks he is talking about a person named Range Robert. As they continue the torture, Godfroy intervenes and attacks them to save Jacquard. They then take him down to the dungeon, where the wizard has prepared another magic potion for him to drink. After he's gone, Godfroy spots a huge ruby ring on his servant's finger and learns it was him who stole the duke's jewels. The servant confesses to stealing, but reveals Jeanette had taken them from him. Hearing this, the wizard tells Godfroy it's the jewels that have left the corridors of time open and that's why the duke is being sucked in. Godfroy and his servant then drink the magic potion again and end up back at the hotel locked inside. After his servant makes their way out by ramming the walls of the beam, they end up in a room where the police officer has been investigating the recent disappearances. Now outside the hotel, Godfroy forces a couple to give them a ride to Beatrice's house, but they abandon him in the middle of the road. Meanwhile, Jacquard gets back to the hotel too, where he tells the police he has traveled to the Middle Ages and tells them to arrest Godfroy. In the meantime, Godfroy steals a police van to get to the city, while in the past, the wizard gives the magic potion to Jean-Pierre to send him back to the future. After returning to Beatrice's house, they ask her about Jeanette, but the officer intervenes, asking about cousin Hubert, but Beatrice satisfies him and he leaves. A while later, Cora and her daughter arrive at Beatrice's place in search of Hubert as she wants to meet her dad. She tries to talk to him, but Godfroy does not understand what she's saying. Seeing him confused, Beatrice urges him to kiss Philippine, who has been waiting for a response from him, thinking he is her father. After Beatrice satisfies them, saying he has been suffering from amnesia, Philippine requests he attend her wedding. As Godfroy tells her he must go back as destiny awaits him, Cora becomes frustrated and leaves with her daughter. Meanwhile, Jeanette heads to a pawn shop to sell the rubies, but he alerts Cora to it, believing they are their lost family jewels. Soon, Cora arrives at the shop and takes back the rubies, while Jeanette is beaten and thrown out of the store. The police officer then visits Beatrice's house again and arrests Godfroy and takes him to the hospital where Gabon is already admitted. Jacquard once again tries to tell them he went back in time and was tortured by the Inquisitor, but the officers think he is just messing with them. After giving him a shot to relax, the officer apologizes to Godfroy for the trouble and allows him to leave with Beatrice. Meanwhile, Jean-Pierre calls Beatrice to tell her that Jeanette has come to their house. When they confront her about the gems, she reveals Cora has taken them. So Godfroy disguises himself as Hubert and goes to Cora, where he asks her to return the jewels, but she reveals they are now with her lawyer. When Cora's husband interrupts the conversation, the servant thinks he is the Count of Burgundy and attacks him with a knife. During the chaos, Philippine rushes to Godfroy and takes him to meet her future in-laws. But first, Godfroy makes everyone uncomfortable, so Cora agrees to hand over the gems and asks him to leave. The following day, Godfroy comes back to their house where Cora returns the jewels as she promised, but Philippine asks him to stay for her wedding. Despite Godfroy revealing he is not her father, but an ancestor, she still insists and Godfroy reluctantly accepts the invitation and even walks her down the aisle after giving her the holy relic as a good omen. 
After the ceremony, Godfroy urges Beatrice to prepare the potion so they can go back, but the servant and Jeanette once again have another plan. They try to sneak out of the party, but are forced to return to get the keys from Beatrice. There is an argument between Godfroy and his servant, who says he'd rather be dead than go back to his old life. Beatrice, however, once again tricks him into drinking cocoa mixed with a magic potion, while Jakar claims Jeanette is also from medieval times, but she proves him wrong by presenting her documents. Beatrice calls Ferdinand and tells him that Jeanette did not take the potion, but he reveals there was another mishap with the spell. We then see Godfroy and his servant have ended up in the 18th century this time, right in the middle of the revolution. They are immediately captured by the servant's descendant, who is now an advisor to Napoleon Bonaparte. They try to reason with him, but their pleas are ignored and are dragged away for being rebels. That was all from the video. Subscribe for more content like this and leave a like to help the channel out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Take care.